Hello guys and welcome to our new video. Kitty finally finished her nap on the new box and now we can start. Today we have a brand new 3D printer to test. It's the Rayu Falcon S. It was released not too long ago and we are curious to see what it has to offer. So let's start as usual with the unboxing. Hi guys! So, the first thing we find is an instruction sheet and the bottom half of the printer. Under the printer, we find a roll of masking tape. Next, we can find a display. A box with parts inside and the upper half of the printer. Inside the box, we have the spool holder, some PLA white filament, the power cord, the USB cable, a spare PTFE tube, and a couple of bags with screws and spare parts which includes a spare nozzle. Some zip ties and several tools. Also included is a glue stick, a memory card and memory card reader, and finally a spatula. The top half of the printer is very similar with the well-known Ender 3. The exception is that this one includes a filament sensor near the extruder. The hotend is also the same one. At the top, we can see the bearing for the lead screw. All end stops are mechanical ones. And this is the bottom half. Now this is completely different. For this part, the manufacturer only used one metal profile for the Y-axis. The rest is made of folded metal sheet. The board is installed at the front side and the power supply at the back side. Before the assembly, we noticed that the Y-axis was very stiff and with a close inspection, we noticed that the bed was pushed down during transportation and pushed the bearings out from the wheels. Probably something heavy was dropped over the printer's package. And for that reason, we need to fix that first. So we need to remove the heat bed, the belt and the front idler. The screws that secure the wheels were pushed against the metal plate and to remove the carriage we were forced to scratch the panel. The problem is an easy fix, we just need to push the bearings into the wheels again. And because we are halfway there, we can disassemble the rest and check what's inside. As I mentioned just now, to access the electronics, we need to remove the entire Y-axis. If the printer was already assembled, 
we would also need to remove the top half. Next, we disconnect the end stop switch and the Y axis motor. And now we can unscrew the top panel and remove it. Here we can see the board. It's a 32 bit MKS Robin Lite version 1.1, equipped with non replaceable Allegro A4988 drivers. For the main connections, I can see that no ferrules were used. The power supply is a 24 volt 10 amp model. Now let's go back to the assembly and install back the panel and Y axis. The bell is in place and now we have a good and smooth movement. Under the heat bed we can see the insulation pad. This insulation pad is not big enough, but we often see the same with some other printers on the market. 2 adjust the tension of the belt, we just need to loosen the four screws that secure the idler mount, pull the idler and tighten the screws. The top half is secured with a couple of screws here at the sides and a screw on each side at the bottom. All the screws are Phillips type, instead of the traditional Allen ones. The marks on the metal suggest that the printer was tested at the factory. Next, we connect the Z-axis motor, the X-axis motor, and the exterior motor. Next, we connect the X end stop, the filament sensor, and the Z end stop. Next, we insert the PTFE tube in the extruder. We connect the bad cable and we connect the big cable to the base. For this cable, we can secure it with the zip tie. Next, we grab the display and reconnect the flat cable. And then, we secure the display. Next, we grab the T-nuts and screws that will be used to secure the spool holder. The spool holder is installed on the top left of the printer. Last but not least is the power cord. And the assembly is now complete. Before the first power on, we need to make a few quick checks. One of them is the X belt tension. To adjust it, we just need to loosen these two screws, push the idler, and retighten the screws. We also need to check all the wheels. They cannot turn free. 
To adjust the grip, find the eccentric nuts and rotate them. Also, don't forget to check the wheels grip of the Y carriage. There are a couple of eccentric nuts that you need to turn to adjust. And now, we can finally turn the printer on and execute the home sequence. After the home sequence, we leveled the bed with a 0.1 mm thick piece of paper. The four corners need to be checked and as many times as needed until we get the bed leveled. The printer includes a print surface and a glass. We will choose to print on the glass. If you use the print surface, you can use the entire area of the bed which is 230 by 230 millimeters. But if you use the glass, you will have less usable print area because of the clips that secure the glass. For the Z, you have 250 millimeters of travel, but I would only consider 230 millimeters because every time you turn on the printer and home the axis, it will raise 20 millimeters, and this way you have a safety zone. The glass is not perfectly flat, but will work. In the memory card, we can find an already sliced model, so we printed that first. And then we sliced a few other models with our own profile. And here are the results. The already sliced model that was in the memory card is this small figure. The profile used by the manufacturer could use some adjustments. With our own profile, we got better results. Here you can see my favorite ripple test cube. This cube shows a perfect surface on one axis and ghosting on the other axis. This might be because of the type of structure that this printer has. We printed a second cube to test the print resume feature and we got different results. The first time, instead of resuming the print, it started from the beginning but at the height that it stopped which resulted in printing a second cube on top of the first one. For the second test, the print resume worked and resumed the print correctly. We also printed this skull in gold color filament. With this model, we can see ghosting and salmon skin from the Allegro drivers. We printed this at 60 mm a second for the infill and 30 mm a second for the outer walls. We printed a second one with only 15 mm a second for the outer walls and reduced the jerk from 10 to 8 
and the result was much better as it reduced the ghosting. We also printed this dog twice. This one was printed with the speed of 30 millimeters a second for the outer walls and this one with the speed of 15 millimeters a second for the outer walls. The speed difference is a major factor for the output quality. We also printed a couple of vases. For the vases, we used a metallic blue filament. In conclusion, this printer works well as long as you keep it under certain levels. The bottom structure, although it gives a slim design, it's also probably responsible for much of the ghosting issues that we found in our prints. Reducing the jerk and reducing the auto wall speed was a key factor to eliminate most of the ghosting and produce better print results. The access to the electronics is not easy, and if you ever need to do something under there, you will need to disassemble more than half of the printer. The manufacturer chose Phillips screws instead of the traditional Allen ones and for me it's a negative point because it's harder to apply the amount of torque that you want and also they are easier to get damaged. I like the fact that they included a glass and a print surface so we can choose what to print on. And I like the hot end that they used which is the same as the well-known Ender 3. For the main board, the manufacturer installed a 32-bit Robin light board. To be honest, I would prefer to have an 8-bit board with removable drivers instead because the non-removable Allegros that run at 1x16 micro steps will not take advantage of any potential that the 32-bit might offer. And since we have Allegro drivers, we can see some salmon skin on the prints. The power resume and the filament runout sensor are also included in this model. And that's it you guys. Hope you liked the video. As always, if you want to help and support the channel, you can with Patreon or PayPal. Keep following us here on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. We will see you guys next time. Bye.